Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get started. So inspired right now by all those little graphite projects that we've been doing that I thought, I'm gonna do some more. <laughs> and this time, so I still got those um, Kiritake sets out, but I also have some of these that I made myself a while back. And some of these are so pretty. And I wrote like on the bottom, like what they were, like orange with graphite. So these are some paints that I've mixed with graphite powder. Um, and I just thought, and at one point I did make little color samples of these and I honestly don't remember what card went with what. So I might just pull um, a little piece of watercolor paper um, over here just to test stuff as I'm going. So I've just put down a piece of watercolor paper on here and I'm just going to um, activate some of these. I'm feeling like I want to play with, um, I don't know which ones I'm going to pick, but I'm feeling like I want to play with opacity and transparency again. And we'll just see like what what can we end up with? And you know, we could do a bunch of these. We could just keep on going with opacity and stuff. There's so much goodness um, a lot of times. And I like this blue. Let's see. Let's kind of look at these and pick a palette. So this one, this pink is almost like a grayed down pink. I really like this orange. See, we can almost kind of plan out that one's not what I was wanting let's see what this one is you can almost plan out like just kind of interesting comp you know, color set by doing a little sampler like this I think this might be like a brown oh that's a black and I'm just gonna paint what feels good we don't have to go anywhere specific today with this. Just want to play and have a little fun. Oh, see now that was kind of pretty. This one's kind of a purpley. Oh, okay. Kind of thinking in this range right here, those were kind of pretty. I don't know what I just picked, but we're going to we're going to go for something like that. Paper's dry. I like for the paint to go where I want it to go, not where it wants to go if it's wet. And so we're just going to lay some color down and I'm going to start um, thinking of opacity first. So I want to have some light spots. I want to have some places where I lay color in and the color is almost not there. And then I want to have some dark spots. So I might come back next to that with something dark and let's just go from there. Oh, look at that. I mixed uh, Chinese orange that might be a Sennelier color, I don't remember. Um, but I mixed that with one of these uh, graphite things. And that was the most gorgeous color. And I don't know if that's the Chinese orange or not, but oh my goodness, it was so good. Okay, I kind of like the blue. Let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Just be brave. Not going anywhere specific here. I don't have a plan in my head. We're kind of intuitively painting my goal is light and dark not a specific uh, opacities like transparencies that's my goal I'm not going somewhere specific with anything else other than let's see if we can get some of this really heavily pigmented oh, 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 oh like that <laughs> and let's see if we can get some that's so transparent that it just is almost a whisper of that color. That's what <laughs> I like that dark though. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was super beautiful. Let's see if we can do that with some blue. Got to really get that blue in that brush. Because I like blue and orange. I kind of was liking that. And you know what I really liked also crazy enough ooh, see look at that darkness that we just got in there oh yeah and what I really liked too was this whatever this is I can't even tell you what it is anymore it's something I made in a class on Skillshare um, on making your own colors with the graphite and I guess I'll need to go back and 
I need to watch that class to see what I even made these out of, but look how pretty that is. It's almost like opera pink mixed with graphite, maybe. I mean, that's what that kind of reminds me of. And then this one is that pretty kind of lavender. Let's just throw that in there. Something completely different color-wise than anything else we've done. And, you know, it's really weird doing something like this and just picking the colors rather than picking a specific palette. But, I mean, we kind of did do blue-orange as the palette, and these other colors are kind of going in after the fact. I don't want that water to sit there. Get a have a piece of paper handy, but I kind of want not that water there. And if you get it too thick, you could sop up some water or um, and create some texture there, or we could let that dry, but we could put some texture in there. That's kind of fun um, to kind of add a little bit as we're going. And then we can come back with some more of this colors because I'm kind of feeling like I lost some of it here. And I might want some of that back in there. And that's how we get some opacity too. If we want to scoop up some of that color with our brush, we could lift back off. I'm just playing, just kind of adding some color getting inspired. We could do some drips. I don't know if I have enough for drips, but we could try some drips. Just lift it up and drip it down and we could help it drip down if I needed to. I could add some water and just kind of help that come on down if I wanted. Just add some more water in there. Probably do the best. Oh yeah, just kind of tap it like right here at the top and get that started. And then those drips can come on down. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. All right, let me get the water out from under here. Look at that. Every time I post one of these, somebody's like, ooh, look at the pretty trees. And I'm like, it is like pretty trees. <laughs> I really like this bit of pink that we can see shining through there. We can kind of look at it and think, okay, do we want to go out a little bigger? Do I need to add more color back in? Because now I've kind of dripped the color away and I do want some darkness back over here, maybe back over here. And I'm just playing, pushing back and forth, pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling, basically. We've got some light colors. We've got some dark colors. I want to see the opacity versus the transparency. Oh, so pretty. I'm loving this blue-orange combo. I'm dripping water where I don't want it. Let's just get that up. Maybe get that one up. Because this one I'm kind of loving. And then while it's still wet, we could come back in here with some just some water and we can watch those kind of bloom out for some texture. I could also add some salt in here if I wanted to get some, some of that texture going. That we really need to wait for it to dry before we keep going if I salt it up. Um, but I like, I just love getting some differences. I liked this a little bit, so maybe get some of that back in here. Just a little, little, just tiny bit of it. Not a lot. I just want that little tiny bit to spring back. And then, what if I want to take some back up? We could take the brush and pull some back up. Let me get a little water on that brush. And So if you need to bring back some, take back some color, you can do that like that and just kind of pull that color back off with a clean brush that's still damp. Now, this is pretty cool. I'm kind of loving what we got going on here. Almost thinking that I don't want to add any more to it at this point. I'm liking where I've got it. I like the shape. I can trim it down to the size once I've got it going. I do kind of not like where um, some of the color has done its own little thing up here and like did a little drip. 
So maybe I'll come back with just a little bit of color and pull that back, pull those drips into the piece. There's a piece over here too that's a little bit like that. And I think it's just because my brush makes little splashes. Um, and then this might be a splash. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, nope. It's just a, just a piece of dirt. There we go. I like it. And I could come back now and I can either loop some color around. That's always a yummy possibility. We could loop some color out of here. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of loving it like it is though. Hmm. Like we just come over here with like a loop or two. That's kind of fun. I'm kind of liking that, that we did that now. And I'm thinking, did I want more color in that? Maybe. Splash a little more in there. I like it. So now that we've got that little bit over there, do we need it anywhere else? Hmm. Maybe we just want it in that one place. I think I'm good with it over here. Maybe we'll just come out again and just have it let it do its thing over here. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, so and that kind of pulled it out further so we're like a little more even. So just some things to kind of be playing with and thinking about. I almost want a little bit darker on this purple over here. So super heavy pigment here on the brush and just tapping some color in where I want it. It's just a push and pull kind of game now, but I love the, the the difference in the opacities that we've got to we've got going. So that makes me super excited because that was my whole goal was these opacities. Pretty! Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm actually really, really happy with this. I do see some kind of spots right out here too that I might work in. So I think this brush kind of just throws a color out. It just tips that color right out. And I'm like, what? What are you doing there? Don't do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, right there, I like that. All right, patience on playing with these sometimes. Okay, so let's let this dry and then I can do some mark making. Look how pretty that is. All right, I'll be right back. Oh my goodness, guys, look at how pretty this turned out. Like, look at that, the colors. And don't ask me what these colors were originally because I have no idea anymore what they were. But if you mix like Daniel Smith and graphite powder, or Sennelier and graphite powder. Those colors, a lot of those granulate. And look at all this granulation that we've now had appear in this piece. And so I kind of feel like they were granulating colors. Um, but you're just going to have to experiment with some of your favorite colors if you mix some of your custom colors like I did. Because I have no idea what they were. But man, so if I ever managed to use all these little ones that I handmade, that's going to be a sad day when I'm like, wonder what that was. <laughs> so I've got some India ink and I think I'm going to use these with my dip pen. This is just black magic ink. Um, there may not be enough down there, but let me just see. Um, so I use this pen with lots of different things. It can be gold. It can be black. Uh, let's just look on our little, see, whoa, such a good line. Um, I could use my brush. I could use those brushes too. Um, but what I kind of want is, well, now that I've done that, I don't think I want to use that. What I kind of want, let me try this other dip pen. Um, this is my just regular Kakamori nib. It's just a regular, a regular dip pen nib. Um, I want a really fine line. Oh yeah, that's much finer. So what I want, and you can do this with, you know, a Posca pen or a, um, any of those that you have. But what I wanted to do maybe come out here in these little loops that I looped out and throw in another layer of little loops and just see like if I can just add an extra little dimension and texture in there and I'm kind of liking that and I could come back with maybe some extra little loops here because I did run those higher up than I actually intended and then we can just kind of stop them in there somewhere 
And then we can do dots or we can do leaves or we can do pearls. We can just get creative. I kind of want them to look like little vines. How about that with the little, some little vines, little leaves. You come back with a little flower or two. I don't know, you can get creative there. This is just some delicate mark making that I want to do on these pieces. Now that it's just so pretty. And see the vines are pretty it gives you little leaves so you could then dot like a little flower out there and to make the little leaves I'm just kind of setting the pin down and just doing a line I'm not getting real picky or specific there it's a real fine little little leaf there so you can kind of see as I pull that closer it's just a real fine, something just soft. It doesn't have to be, you know, a lot going on there. It's just pretty details. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people, I don't know if you went to art school or not, um, but I've done a lot of different art classes. And when you go to like art school, a lot of the philosophies there is, it's not art unless it's ugly. <laughs> especially like you know galleries big galleries in like New York City or something they always have these gallery shows with like the ugliest art you've ever seen and it's like that's what fine art is it's things that's kind of grotesque and I'm just like why would you want ugly art I don't like ugly art so I don't buy into the ugly art movement <laughs> I want pretty art okay so I could do some little viney things over here to kind of pull that together so those aren't sitting there by themselves but look how pretty and delicate you know a dip pen line can be compared to say like a pen line um, that's why I like some of these using a dip pen with ink rather than say an ink pen I like the differences that you can get with the different nibs I just like to play I like that I can use different inks like the India ink when it dries it doesn't smudge later so you could keep piling things on top of it um, you wouldn't have any smudges appear if it got wet whereas some of my ink pens they get wet you know if they get water on them they um, they get wet they smear and then I'm like well I just totally ruined that and I do have some Faber-Castell uh, India ink pens that I just got that I could have used but I wanted this little delicate line and I just love dip pens. Most of the times, some people are like, I don't know what to look for for a dip pen. Is that a calligraphy pen? And that is usually what you find um, the dip pens under is calligraphy. But just get some and play and experiment. It's all about just experimenting. There's no right or wrong way in your art. Ooh, see, that's pretty too. Now we kind of gave it a reason to keep going over there. All right, so now that I did that, I kind of want some little birds all right I did a few little dots I am feeling like I'm gonna pull out the pastels because I do like the way the pastels kind of look with these um and I could pull out oil pastels but man I'm on a soft pastel kick and I could just do like some little like a little bit of orange like look at this orange totally looks like the right color um, and it doesn't have to be sock them in your face it could just be little dots of color that pull that color into another area and then you're like oh look how delightful that is that's what I want to do I just want a little bit of delightfulness I really love this little spot right here pretty pretty these are Sennelier half sticks but I don't know what the colors are but look at this little color right here it's really pretty too and again I'm just going for little little marks doesn't have to be something that's super obvious just just a little different and if you need some color in there somewhere and it's covering up something that you liked you could come back and put that in with the pastel this is really delightful and pretty and I'm kind of thinking, I don't want it to be overly marked and overly done. I really love what I've got going on. 
with the different areas right there as we've got it right now feel like I think I got water right there and it's making a spot I didn't want there we go I feel like I definitely want to deckle these edges real quick um, if you get pastel where you didn't intend it like I just did this little high polymer soft white eraser um, has been like the best like literally anything that like a like a, a mark or a piece of pastel that sits on the paper um, this thing is great doesn't make a lot of eraser shavings it makes some but it doesn't make a lot of them and then you can kind of wipe those away and I've got pastel on here so I'm gonna show it again in case you haven't caught one of the other ones do this outside don't do this inside um, but I want to film it I, I'm similarly a soft pastel fixative it does darken the color slightly so do it on a sample sheet hold it like 12 to 15 inches away and then I just lightly coat the piece let that dry and then I do another coating and then you can do as many coatings as you need but I usually stop at two or three coatings and just let that dry I mean the main goal here more than anything is just to get that piece of pastel to sit there it's not to um, it's never going to glue it down permanently because it's pastel let's think that was where that just came from um, I had a spot up here that I didn't know where that come from um, but pastels you're, you're just you're never going to glue it down permanently you can still go back and smudge it no matter how many coatings you put on it because it's powder underneath the top of that clear coating but it'll definitely secure it so that you can then finish and then put it in an art sleeve look how pretty this is I almost feel like it needs something right here but I can come back and decide that later I do really like it just like it is so we're gonna we're gonna do that I'm gonna go ahead and deckle these edges because it's the easiest thing to do and I don't know which videos you catch and don't catch so I don't mind deckling the edges with you so I'm gonna grab my rip ruler which is my dual edge ripper you can use a regular ruler too I just love this one got a piece of wax paper oh, this one is so pretty and I'm gonna put that there because it does have the pastel on it and then I'll try not to move it around and around and around and I'm gonna kind of look at this and think you know how far over do I want to come you know kind of like within an inch or so of that so just kind of looking at that it's about right there I'm eyeballing it you can certainly measure if you want to get it more exact and I tear from the back because it leaves a ledge on the back side and I want that ledge to be on the back side all right let's see what that looks like <laughs> oh my god so that just totally makes it all right so right here gonna be about right there so now we're not gonna pick it back up I'm gonna set it down I flip that over so where do I want to kind of cut that about right here all right so I'm thinking about right here and then the other side is the drip side and I know I want it to be pretty thin so I don't have to pick that up just going to tear it where the drips look like they continue off the page which was where basically the tape was that I'm tearing here <laughs> all right let's see what we got hopefully I didn't spread any more pastel oh, see that's exactly what I wanted I wanted it to come off the page but I wanted this three sides to have some room and some lip there all right hope you enjoyed painting today with some custom colors that I have no idea what they were but these were pre-mixed watercolors mixed with graphite powder and then just spooned into a watercolor pan and 
I love making lots of colors and so I made a whole bunch of colors to play with because the six original colors that I had gotten um, just wasn't enough colors. I got those and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need like a hundred colors. And so I just started pulling out all my favorite two water colors, mixing it with graphite powder. I just played with the amount and then spooned them into these little watercolor pans. And that's how I created all these lovely colors. So I hope you had fun experimenting with me today. And if you want to show me what you're working on or if you painted with me today, you can tag me at Two Little Owls Instagram, uh, on Instagram at Two Little Owls Art. You can join the art group I got for peeps on uh, Facebook. I link all that below the video for you. I can't wait to see uh, what you're working on and I'll see you next time.